Unfortunately, there I run out of words. Perhaps you will forgive me if I turn from my own feelings to the words of another splendid bugger. W.H. Auden. This is actually what I want to say. Stop all the clocks. Cut off the telephone. Prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin. Let the mourners come. Let the aeroplanes circle moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, he is dead. Context is everything. Stop All the Clocks may be one of the most famous poems ever written. Imprinted onto our collective consciousness by John Hannon's simple recitation in Four Weddings and a Funeral. But this poem was never meant to be read as a sincere elegy. It wasn't even meant to be read aloud at all. It was written by a young W.H. Auden to be set to music by an even younger Benjamin Britten. Auden and Britton first crossed paths in 1935 when they had been separately hired by the General Post Office Film Unit to provide words and music for a series of short films about modern day life. The result was a collection of sometimes surreal but crystalline verse commentaries, like this one from The End of Nightmare from 1936. It was at this time that Auden approached Britton to write music for a new play his second collaboration with Christopher Isherwood called The Ascent of F6. This play was seen as a landmark of the playwriting scene in the 1930s. It follows the story of two powers, Britain and Ostonia, who are battling over contested territory in the fictional country of Pseudoland. At the centre of this territory is a mountain, F6, and the first nation to climb it can claim dominion over the land. Britain sends Michael Ransom, the brother of a high-ranking civil servant, to ascend the peak. The expedition, though, is a disaster. Michael does manage to climb to the top of the mountain, but dies alone at the summit. And at the top, in a surreal and fantastical twist, he kills his brother, James. What have you done? What have you done? You have killed, you have murdered her favourite son, the chorus chants. James is heralded as a martyr, and the whole of England is plunged into mourning for one of her greatest sons. Auden then gives a simple instruction in the script. A blues. Monks enter with a stretcher. James's body is carried in slow procession round the stage and away into the darkness. Stop of the Clocks was never intended as a heartfelt ode, but instead as an ironic and overtly ostentatious funeral dirge. It's a cynical take on pageantry and the excesses of state and of the worst features of political power and greed. Let aeroplanes circle moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, he is dead. Britain's setting of the words then amplifies their grandiose nature. It's full of clashing chromatic chords in the piano, rumbling piano and percussion strokes, and a dirge-like unison choral line, where every beat is accented and articulated in cold synchronization. This is blues, but not the blues of sorrow, but blues as irony. The chromatic non-diatonic notes are not full of expression, but of sharpness amplified by the hard-edged articulation and expression. The score is full of accents and staccatos, and even in the more legato humming section, the regular piano and percussion beats make sure we don't forget the inherent harshness of the music. Audiences were so struck by the music, and in particular the voice of the mezzo-soprano soloist Heldy Anderson, that Auden and Britton committed to make a collection of cabaret songs, written for Anderson, of which four remain, one of them being Funeral Blues. 
Auden published these four poems independently in his 1940 anthology, Another Time. It's at this point that we see the poem that we know today fully realised. Auden removed the last two stanzas that made specific references to the context of the play and replaced them with two new ones. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week and my Sunday rest. These new lines explored metaphorical depths that the original words hadn't come close to. Auden drew upon themes of the transformative power of love found in other poems in the same collection, but more accurately explored the destructive effect of love when it fails. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. This raises the question, why did he change the poem so dramatically? And how should we approach reading it now, given its original context? It's easy to go down a path of second guesses and assumptions about the meaning of this new poem. Is it about death or the absolute power of love and its ability to overwhelm or destroy us? Auden, after all, wrote in the same anthology that we must love another or die. Or is it more specifically about Britain and about the unrequited love Auden felt for him? It's often been thought that Auden wrote lines about his and Britain's relationship in the words of their collaborations in the 30s and 40s. The text of the middle section of the choral Hymn to St. Cecilia reads, There is no creature whom I belong to, whom I could wrong, I shall never be different. Love me. History of poetry, like the history of music though, can only take us so far. Stop on the Clocks might have started life as a satirical take on ritual and ceremony. Born out of the relationship between a poet and a composer at the beginning of the 20th century, but it changes every single time it's discovered or rediscovered. These things that we read to ourselves, listen to in a quiet moment, or hear recited in a film. It was my north, my south, my east and west. Are forever reinvented by their repetition. My working week and my Sunday rest. New meanings and new powers are created as they find new ears for the words or notes to fall upon. I thought that love would last forever. I would draw. Context is everything. The stars are not wanted now. Put out everyone. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to any good.